Hey there, Sam. A function can return a string, a number, an array, or an object. But what if I tell you a function can return another function? Interesting, right? So the concept of a function that is returning another function or taking a function as its argument is known as a higher order function. And higher order functions are one of the key pillars in functional programming. And we'll be discussing more about functional programming in a future video. For now, let's take a look at why we might need a higher order function in our code. So in general, higher order function lets us write cleaner and more maintainable functions. Let's take a look at an example. Suppose we have a main element and I want to create multiple headings with different colors inside our DOM. First of all, let's target our main element so we can easily manipulate it later on. Next, I want to introduce you to new concepts. The first one is something called a factory function, which is basically a higher order function that generates or returns a function. The second concept is called closure which is a fancy word for a function that was defined in another function. Now we'll be creating our headings using these few concepts that we just learned. So a heading has two variables, the color and also the content of the heading. The idea here is that we'll be creating a factory function that accepts the color of the heading and the factory will create another function that creates the heading with the specified color. I'll show you what I mean. So we'll declare a new function called heading factory and it accepts one argument, which will be the color of the heading. And inside the function, we define a closure, which is what this factory will return later on. Now this closure is where we actually create the heading. So the closure here is a function that accepts a single argument again. And this time, the argument will be the text content of the heading. We're going to create a new variable, heading, which is equal to document create element h1. And we want to set the color of the heading to the color specified in the factory function. So we'll set the style attribute, the value will be color, colon, and the color argument that we pass into the factory function. Next, we'll set the text content to the text argument, and finally return the heading as a result of this closure. Then we'll return closure as the result of heading factory. Okay, now let's take a look at how we can use this factory function. The benefit of using a factory function is that it is very, very flexible, and they make our code very declarative and reusable. So here, let's say I want to create a red heading. To do that, I'm going to call my heading factory function and pass in the color red to it. And let's set the result to a variable. Now let's break it down. The heading factory will return us a function. So create red heading is a function. And this function is the closure that we define inside the factory function, which accepts a text argument and will return a heading with the color red. Let's try this out. I'm going to try to call the create red heading function and pass some random text to it and append the result to a main element. And it works. We can now see a red heading inside our browser. Let's take a look at another example. Let's create a gray heading this time and repeat the process. And now we get a gray heading in our DOM. And every time I want a new red heading or gray heading, I just need to call the create red heading or create gray heading function over and over again, which is very descriptive and convenient. Now at this point, you might be wondering, what's the difference between this technique against a normal function that accepts color and text to create a similar heading, which looks something like this. A short answer, there's not much difference. It's really all about your personal preference. However, it does make a huge difference when you've got a complex function that has a lot of arguments and logic. By applying the techniques that we learned in the past few minutes, we can break down a very complex function into smaller bits and execute the complex logic in multiple steps, which helps in debugging and also maintenance in the long run. So that's a quick intro to closure and also higher order functions. We'll discuss more functional programming concepts in the future. Key takeaway for this lesson, higher order functions are functions that accept another functions as its argument or return another functions as its result. Closures are functions that are defined inside another function. In other words, a function within a function. Functional programming techniques can really help us to write more declarative and cleaner code. If we use them appropriately, our code will be easier to read and maintain in the long run. And that's it for now, and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for your support.